What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers. This is episode number 28 and I hope you guys are doing really well in your uh, respective quarantines, your shelter in places amidst all this uh, coronavirus stuff. Um, it's been a fun time, but uh, here we are in a different world on Europa. And last episode, that's what we did. We, we flew to here in our cool little ship and we built this kind of starter base. And that's what we're going to try and uh, expand upon today so we can bring you out of the, the real world and into, you know, the, the cool space engineers world where there is no coronavirus. Well, not yet anyways. Okay, so we have a pretty good base set up here, but we're lacking a couple of uh, of the stuff that we really wanted to do. Um, so the, the big one's going to be the... the uh, what, the welder pit, I guess, uh, which is going to hopefully send ships back to Mars, wherever it is. Mars over there to our other base uh, once it's fully set up. But we're going to do that probably next episode. Um, this episode, we're going to focus on trying to set up our cargo area. We're going to try and find some ores so that we know where they are for future reference. And we're going to create a couple of different ships. We're going to make a miner, a welder, and a scouting ship. And I think the scouting ship's probably going to be a rover. We might make a scouting ship that's a rover and a flying one. I don't actually know. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. But um, first, let's start easy. Let's make the cargo area. And I don't really know where I want to put that. I think I might put it on this side. That's what I'm kind of gearing towards. Uh, in here would be nice, but I kind of want an area where I can, like, dock some ships. And I think this is a good area for that. So we might reserve this um, for that. So, like, we put our would put our rover in here, and the rover would come out this way, and it would be able to drive down the mountain, hopefully. I mean, that's kind of a steep mountain, but, you know, <laughs> it'll be fine. Um, so let's try and put our... our um, cargo stuff over here for this we'll expand one okay here, here's what we'll do we'll go oops not that that's a piston we'll go out one with uh one of these oops we're, we're missing the blocks let's grab a couple of those make sure it's the big one uh yeah two's fine for now okay so we're gonna grab two and we're gonna go out like that and then we'll build our cargo right off of this and if it matches up correctly we'll do that right here as well but we'll see uh i don't think i'm gonna do any crazy sorter uh, situation here like I did on the normal base so I think I think everything will be fine here we, don't, we won't have to worry about things um, I guess being dragged into the wrong place uh, okay so you and we'll put yeah we'll put our cargo thing do we have a cargo here uh, cargo I haven't actually played since the new update so I don't really know what they added I, I actually haven't been playing space engineers for a while I took a little bit of a break in case you're wondering where I was uh, during all that so I actually do wonder what they added um, Frostbite. Oh, okay. Okay, so they added a... Oh, apparently I don't have the DLC. They added a antenna dish, a gate, an offset door, a some dead engineers. Oh, my lord. <laughs> okay, so this antenna does actually look like it does do stuff, so that's kind of cool. It can be used to broadcast positions, messages, HUD markers, and allows grids to be accessed or controlled from a distance. I wonder if we use this. I'll have to go and look this up to see if it's more powerful than the uh, laser antenna or if it works similar. Because if it is, we'll put it. We'll put one of those antennas right here, and we'll put one back over there. Because it's gonna look cooler probably than the laser antenna, I, I would imagine. Uh, okay, let's weld this up, and let's try and stick our cargo in here. Cargo. We want a large one, right here, and we'll try and stick that right on here. We're gonna have to, of course, go get the parts real quick for a large one. There we go. Uh oh, we were able to grab everything. Okay, so stick that right there, and I think that did connect properly. Yeah, it looks like it did. All right, let's weld you up. And, oh, it doesn't look like it's going to actually match up with this perfectly, but it's going to be... Well, actually, you know what? On second thought, if we do something like this, it will. It will match up perfectly and we'll be able to... Yeah, let's try that. So I'll build this one up since we do have the extra parts. What? 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 I thought we grabbed two full things of this. How do we not have the interior plate for that? Oh, well, it's fine. Let's put this piece on here. Number nine. Okay. And we did bring enough for two of these things, so I'm not worried about materials uh, quite yet. And let's go grab enough for two more of these things. Um, there we go. One, two. Sweet. Here's one. And here is the second one. Just because we had to get that interior plate done. Um, although I guess to save materials we didn't need that because it was an armor piece, but it's fine. Uh, and in fact, right here, let's let's make a little ramp for ourselves. Uh, I guess I can use a normal block here. I was going to use a ramp to save on blocks, but we're not going to weld these in, so it's fine. Okay, so now we have a normal base set up with, uh, with some cargo containers. Let's see what it looks like from above. Okay, that looks pretty good. And this will be like the garage area that'll come over there. 
Or maybe even over there. I actually don't know. We might come out the front because it's less steep. We'll see. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll decide uh, eventually. Okay, let's start on our first thing, which is going to be a scouting um, sh a scouting ship, I guess. It's going to be like... Honestly, it's not going to have any, uh, any, any like cargo containers in it. It's not going to have any sort of way to carry stuff. It's only going to be a scouting ship. So, actually, does uranium spawn on here or is it only in the asteroids? If uranium spawns on here, we could power everything via uranium, and that would be kind of cool. Actually, what am I thinking? We should really do hydrogen uh, power for everything. Everything should have hydrogen engines on it. Because, first of all, we don't use those very often. And second of all, we're surrounded by ice everywhere. The whole the whole little moon is ice. So, uh, yeah, let's definitely do hydrogen. So we're going to make a hydrogen craft, uh, I guess. And actually, you know what? This is going to be interesting because I didn't bring enough materials for ships. But I did bring a, a couple of extra materials for everything. So let's take a look. Okay, we have a lot of steel. I love how it says around 1,994. 1, um, we have a lot of steel plates, computers. I think we should be good to build a ship. We're not missing anything crucial. And we only went with two batteries on the base when we brought enough for four, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, we brought enough for four, so we should be fine for batteries as well for the ship. Um, okay, so let's... I guess let's start building a ship. Uh, we'll start with our landing gear, as always landing gear and this thing's gonna have to have an antenna so this ship we're gonna make at first is going to be uh half um human powered and half antenna powered so it's gonna be possible to do both i just made that white by accident because it's the same button it's fine okay flip this don't want to make a large one <laughs> that would take so many materials let's turn around this way and plonk Weld that thing up. Now we're going to, un I don't even know why I welded this, but we're going to unweld it up um, pretty soon anyway. So let's build a couple of armor blocks coming off of this. Uh, because I like to build kind of high up in the air so that we don't have to worry about um, jumping on stuff to look at the underside. Okay, so let's build a little ship. Uh, how do we want to do this? All right, there we go. There's the chassis of our little vehicle. And actually, is that too small? That might be, but I think it's, it's probably going to be fine. <laughs> Um, the worst that'll happen is it'll flip over and then we'll be in big trouble, but it, it should be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to weld up these pieces here and then we're going to drop it down so we can build on the top. All right, not a fan of the design. I went back to kind of a, a smaller design. I thought it was a bit too large, so I, uh, I made it a bit smaller. Let's uh, make sure we don't die here and there we go. Okay, so this is pretty good. Uh, now how do I want to do this, I wonder, because I want to, I want to make it have a camera. But I wonder if I want to give it like a third person camera or a first person. I guess first person would be better. But a third person might also be really useful, wouldn't it? Let's give it a third person camera. Um, well, well, we'll actually go back one and then up. So back one and then up would probably be fine. And let's actually go out one more. There you go. Right block. Oops. And we'll call this probably the scorpion or something. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, come back, come back. With, with no gravity, well, with very little gravity, it means things fly really quickly, or really far. All right, and then let's stick one of these on the top. Oops, like that. There we go, and we'll stick a camera right there, and that'll kind of give it a sort of uh, third-person view, which will be very, very helpful um, if, if we get it stuck somewhere. Uh, okay, so, see, NASA, NASA should be taking notes from me. <laughs> okay, let's, let's give it, uh, there we go, we're facing the right way. We'll give it a couple of these, actually. And we'll give it something like this. There we go. So the ones on the left and right... Well, actually, let's... Let's uh, see if we can put one right here as well. I'm going to get. I'm gonna put lights on there. Unable to place light armor slope. Okay, that's probably fine. So that if it's really dark, this thing will be able to see what it's looking for. So we'll stick a camera on the front. Uh, I don't think we have camera anywhere. But we'll... We'll grab one from here. So camera goes on the front right side up. Camera also goes on the back, just like that. And then we're going to stick some normal lights here. Spotlights is what I'm looking for. There we go. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll stick with I, I was thinking maybe maybe I swap to interior lights, but no, swap. Spotlights should be fine. Uh, and we'll make sure the slats, slats are, are uh, facing up like that. All right, cameras, it looks like we need... Uh, some computers, and for this we need some large steel tubes. I'm not going to bother with the bulletproof glass. So computers and large steel tubes, that is doable, but we need to go at the big entrance right here. 
Okay, large steel tubes. We only need two of them, but we'll grab five just in case we need them in the future. And for computers, we'll grab 40. Because why not? All right, looking good, looking good, and looking good. And one more looking good. There it is. All right, so we've got our camera our camera set up right there. Uh, that's a sideways camera. That is not going to do well. If you have a sideways camera like this, uh, I'm pretty sure there's no option to actually turn the camera. So you're going to end up with a um, with a sideways view. Um, in real life, you'd be able to flip the image or something. All right, camera like that. And we're going to need a couple of batteries. Do we go with small batteries because we can stick them on the side like this? Or do we go with larger ones uh, fitting of a, a larger mission? In fact, if I could redo this, I would probably stick the battery between this, but I don't want to redo it again. So I think we will... How far do small batteries take you? I don't know. They don't take you that far, do they? But this is this is not not really reliant on the batteries anyway because this has the... Uh, it's going to have the hydrogen engine, so we're going to go with batteries indeed. We'll stick them like this along the sides. Um, and they're just kind of a backup. We'll even stick more if we need more. Uh, but they're just kind of a backup for if the hydrogen engine fails. All right, we're going to need some power cells here. Power cells and construction components. Is that it? I believe that's it. Power cells, construction components. We'll grab... I guess not that many, probably. <laughs> Let's grab 40 of those, and then we'll grab as many construction components as we can. Or 100. Did I grab enough? Con yeah, I did. Okay. Sweet! We have power! Uh, Alright, so this thing should be fully functional now, but we want to add a hydrogen engine if I'm if I remember correctly. Alright, we've got double engines. I don't actually know. Let's, let's do only one, actually. There's one more feature I'm thinking of giving this thing. I'm wondering if it would do well to have a, um, a a drill, maybe on the back or something, on a piston, that would go down and fetch it some ice if it starts to run low. Since this is supposed to go out on little missions around the area to try and find some ores or other stuff. Um, well, let's at least give it an ore detector. We'll stick that right here. Is this thing going to start to become back heavy? It might. <laughs> And that's gonna be a, a slight problem, but hopefully it keeps all its weight r roughly toward the front So I probably really should have stuck the ore detector down here or something Actually, that's that's a better idea. Just so uh, just so we don't offset this thing Because that could be a problem All right now, I think if I remove these two blocks it won't fall apart. Let's uh, give it a go. Yep, okay weird gamble, but it worked Okay, we'll stick the ore detector right there, so it can detect pretty much anything that's right under us. And then, of course, for the drill, uh, if we if we do do one, we can maybe stick it right here. I don't know. It, 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 it might not be a good idea. We might just have to rely on this thing connecting to the base. Speaking of connecting, we're going to need a connector. Actually, I'm going to remove all this, and I'll re-add it back. Okay. This is looking good. We just need to connect this up to that, and we should be good. I don't know that we'll need any storage because this automatically takes place or, or, or uh, takes care of a little bit of storage. Wait a second, does this hydrogen engine converts hydrogen? Has its own internal hydrogen. So we're gonna need an O2 H2 generator, aren't we? I have not used hydrogen um, tanks in a long time. O2 H2 generator. I believe it actually fits right in line with it, so um, it's not really a big deal. Does it? Okay, maybe it does not. What the heck? I thought this thing had... Hang on. Okay, so it has them on the bottom. Oh, well, let's do this, then. This actually fits perfectly. Oops, apparently not. <laughs> it was so close. Alright, we need a motor to fix this thing up. We'll grab a couple motors, just in case we need any more in the near future. Um, all right, and then that should be good. We just need to connect this thing up. What else do we need before we do that? Do we want to have some storage or do we not? If we did, it'd have to fit in here, and I don't think I don't think that would be that much storage. I think probably honestly we're fine with the uh, connector. All right, let's connect this up. Uh, we need small ones. Small conveyors. I don't understand why did they? Oh, I guess 
Okay, I know why. I was going to say, why did they not make small conveyors just a small version of large conveyors? But it's because you can have also large conveyors on your ship. So, yeah. Okay, that's now connected to that. We just need to stick some ice in here. Let's go and mine some real quick. Stick that in here. And let's see. How, how, how's that doing? Is it, uh, is it doing its thing? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know if this thing's actually powered up. Uh, okay, so that we should be able to... Oh, no. No, we're, we're actually missing one thing. Uh, I'll stick it... No, I'll stick it right here, actually. We are missing the controller thing. Uh, remote. I bet you I'm missing a piece, actually, for the remote control now. No, I'm not, actually. Everything is good. Okay, so we have our remote control. We have this thing. And I said we we're going to make this manned, but I kind of want to try out unmanned. Let's, uh, remote access. Oh, we got to name it. Um, okay. Well, we do have to name it, and it doesn't much look like a Scorpion anymore, so I'm just going to go with a normal Patreon name. Let me real quick grab one, and I'll be right back. All right, my friends, behold the Busy Bee, named after Busy Cola, who is one of our patrons. Uh, if you want to become a patron, go look in the description below. There's a link to uh, Patreon where you can pledge any amount if you want. It goes to, towards uh, supporting the channel. Um, but yeah, Busy Bee, I figured this thing's going to be kind of busy scouting the area, looking for stuff. Uh, trying to find ores and stuff. So busy, busy cola, busy bee. I figured it goes pretty well. And of course, I had to have a color scheme to go with the busy bee. Um, I think I'll keep the lights white though. I don't really want to make them uh, yellow as well. But let's go ahead and try it out. Let me make sure I have full uh, stuff before I go on this expedition here, because otherwise I'm gonna find myself. Um, what am I gonna find myself? I'm gonna find myself running out of stuff while uh, while out there driving this thing. Okie dokie, so let's go here and we're going to go to remote access. It's called the Busy Bee Scout Rover in the uh, terminal, but we're going to go ahead and take control of that. So we now have control. I'm going to press G and add the cameras, question mark. Okay, one moment. I actually have to go and uh, name the cameras, otherwise I'm not going to know which one I'm dealing with. Okay, so camera number one, control panel. Camera number four, we'll call this camera one, and camera two. So camera one, if we take a view, is going to be our first person camera. So let's, we can name them now. Control panel, camera, uh, first person, and camera, third person. I guess I can write it out. Third person perspective. And I wonder if that's actually a good third person perspective. First, ah, I'm bad at typing under pressure. Person. I hate typing in videos. It, it, like, it takes so long to type. Okay. Let's go back in here. Remote access. Busy B control thing. Um, G? No. K? Yes, K. No, G is correct, actually. G is correct. Okay, we're going to grab our first person camera right there for view. Our third person camera right there for view. We should grab a second person camera just looking at it. <laughs> uh, what else do we want? Do we want to know anything else? I guess not. We'll just we'll just grab this and drive it a little bit. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, edit some stuff. So we're gonna do all-wheel drive. Uh, but do I know where my wheels are? <laughs> Why do they all say right? That doesn't make sense. Um, okay, hang on. Let me show these on HUD real quick. I'm gonna have to go and name these. All right, let's hop back in here and see if we can control it again. This time, a little bit better. Number one. Good lord. That is so much power. Oh, and, oh, oh, okay, okay. Let's go to third person, let's see. Oh, man. This thing has way too much power, I think. I think that's what it is. There we go, that's, see, that's reasonable. That is reasonable. All right, let's go out on a little expedition. Remember, this is a pretty steep little area, but this is what a third person perspective looks like, and I'm actually not very, uh, not very um, uh, sad with this. This looks really good. Okay, so we'll see if we can grab some ores while we're out here. Let's go into our first person. There we go. We, oh man, we got so many lights. I might add the option to turn those off as well. Oh my god, we're going to flip this thing over very easily, aren't we? I might make the wheel span a little bit larger or something. That might make it better. Oh, oh, we're turning. And there it is. Nope, but we're coming back. Okay, yep, there it is. We knew it would happen eventually. All right, so I'm going to add a, uh, a gyroscope on this thing um, so that we don't have that issue very much. 
All right, and the gyro is going to allow us to, to have a little bit better control. I feel like a gyro is cheating, but, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. Um, gyroscope. Let's uh, see if that fixed anything. Go into our third person view, and we can now do something like this to get ourselves back oriented correctly. Okay, so now if we're if we're hopping around on these things, we should be able to orient ourselves really well. Uh, because we can now orient ourselves in the in the air, as opposed to before, where we could only orient ourselves when we touch the ground. You know, I've actually wondered, maybe it would have been better off if I had put wheels on the top as well for this thing, wouldn't it? Would that have been a good idea? Maybe. Okay, ice everywhere, obviously. Oh, we're going down the mountain. This reminds me of the GTA mountain, the the freaking what's it called? What the heck is the GTA mountain called? How, how have I forgotten the name of that? Um, now I'm just going to sit here thinking of what that's called. Oh, we have six minutes of power, so we actually don't have that much power here with this thing. Is that with our batteries? Hang on, is our... I've got to real quick diagnose this. Is our thing working? Okay, we have our signals over here. Is our um, hydrogen engine doing its thing? Or are we have we run out of ice already? I guess that's... No, we have not. It's just not doing it. It's supposed to... Hydrogen engine. H2 engine. If I remember correctly... Where's our H2 engine? There we go. So, the H2 engine seems... Is this actually working now and actually using... Yeah, okay. So, last time I used it, the H2 engine seemed to be a little bit bugged as well, where it didn't actually start by itself. Um, so, I put an H2 engine on in one of these things, and I put a battery on, but it wouldn't start. You'd have to do a lot of stuff. Eventually, it would finally start randomly, and you, you never knew why. But uh, it does look like now it's actually working. So, we should have a lot more power. Let's head back to main base. Okay, we have many hours of uh, driving left. Okay, let's just keep going this way. See uh, see what we can get ourselves up to. W when will we flip it again? Post your uh, wagers down in the comments below. Will it be in the next few seconds? Will it be in the next minute? Wait, these these white signals... Okay, so white signals are not ores, if I, if I remember correctly. It's going to be only the yellow signals that I'm looking for. And honestly, I might not even be able to find uh, silver, because silver is usually really low. I have two days of power. Wow. Whee! This is so much easier to drive with the, uh, with the gyro. I'm just saying that. If you're ever making a rover on a, on a planet like this that's very uh, mountainy, make a gyro. <laughs> It makes life so much easier. All right, let's just keep driving. Let's gun it. Oh, land, land on your feet. Okay, there we go. We're going onto this mountain here. Let's go into third person. See what? It oh no! All right, thank you, third person view. You've showed me that I do not want to climb up that. We'll go around. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go around this way. You guys are gonna have to let me know if I miss stuff, by the way, because it's entirely possible I'll miss some some uh, some ores. Oh, we got a little bit too fast. Oh, that was a bump. Ooh, Earth's view over there looks really nice. I think there's. Oh my God. Do we dare go off this? I will go around it. <laughs> I think there's a mod that removes this. Uh, see this filter that's on the camera? I think there's a mod that removes that. Oh my god, Mount Chiliad! That's what it was! Mount Chiliad. Oh, don't hit! Okay, we didn't hit. Oh, here we go. Ow. Oh man, Gyro saved us. Thank you, Gyro. This is actually really fun to drive. <laughs> Woohoo! Bounce on your feet. As long as we bounce on our feet, the suspension should take care of any death that might happen. Oh, prepare to see Earth. There it is, in all of its glory. Oh, we see silver! Silver! <laughs> I saw silver! What luck is that? Silver. Immediately. Okay, we got silver and cobalt right here. Let's put on our parking brake and we'll bump a uh, GPS coordinate. Oh, man. Wait, can we even... 
Hang on. Is there a way to put a GPS coordinate at the um, antenna, or do we have to actually be there? Let me try it. If I make a new from current position, and then hop out of this. Oh, okay, so it does put one at, at uh, what I'm controlling. All right, that's good. I, I was worried it might put one at my position, but uh, no, it looks like it did it correctly. All right, K, okay. and actually, wait, hang on. Okay, that's kind of cool. The slats. I'm looking at the slats in the light. That's kind of cool. All right, K, okay. GPS. New one is going to be uh, Europa. Um, silver. What's silver? A, G, and cobalt. Cobalt. Sweet. Don't show on HUD anymore. All right, let's go and look for one more thing. Um, and then we'll go back to base. And we'll probably go and grab a little bit of that silver as well. So that we can uh, finish up our... Um, med bay. I really need to find some iron. That would be nice now. Iron is our next main concern. Because I do believe we have gold right next to our base. In, in a rock. Let's actually start heading back toward, like, in the direction of the base. Oh man, this is, this is so much fun. No. Oh, we're gonna bounce? Hey! Oh no, oh no, oh my god, thank you Gyro. That is why you need a Gyro, my friends. Use a Gyro. Iron, there we go. Iron and nickel, in fact. Alright, let's see, let's bump forward a little bit, see if we can find something else. We do find some cobalt, and that might be it. Okay, parking brake, K, new from current position. We're going to have some EU, uh, FE. Um, N, I, and C, O. Awesome. So EU is for Europa as well, if you didn't get that from the from the previous one. All right, let's head back to base, and anything we find on the way is going to be some extra stuff. Woohoo! Oh, look at that base in all of its glory. Look at that beautiful base over there. <laughs> wow, the base looks so much bigger from this uh, from this camera view. Uh, first person. Okay, uh, let's go in first person, actually. I was in third person. First person. Yeah, I think the two perspectives were a good idea. This actually is really nice to uh, to see a different view of everything. All right. Let's... Oh, wait. Hang on. Uh, let's hit our parking brake, and we're good. Welcome back, ship. Uh, I need a way to turn off the engine, in fact. Let's go back in here real quick. Okay, we'll turn that off. If I turn it back on... Okay, it does actually turn back on. Sweet. All right. And it does look like it was charging our batteries as well. Uh, I think I'll keep the batteries on. Oh, I need to turn off the lights as well. Um, remote access. This. G. Lights. Oh, wait. K. Uh, where's our lights? Spotlight 3 and 4. Not a fan of how it always names stuff like that. Like, if, if, two and, if 1 and 2 are gone, it'll still name it 3 and 4. Which is uh, kind of annoying. Lights. Um, oh yeah, and then G. And groups for lights. Toggle on and off. So we'll toggle our lights off. There we go. Alright, sweet. So it should be using very little power. It should, actually, I can even check that. Uh, one more time. Let's go back in here. Um, 48 minutes. Why? I want, to, I want to turn its batteries off. But the problem is, if I turn its batteries off... It will not, like, I won't be able to connect to it anymore because this will be unpowered. So I do kind of have to leave it on. Which is annoying. Oh, I know why. It's 38 minutes. Production. I mean, remote access. Hopefully for the last time. G. All blocks. Um, O2H2 generator. Let's turn you off. There you go. Now you're off. Hopefully 49 minutes still. What is using power? You know what? I'm just going to make a second page dedicated to turning everything off. So this will be the startup procedures that we'll do when we want to turn this thing back on. Um, okay, so now if I go into that second page and turn everything off. So number seven off, number six off, number five off, number four is already off, and number two off. It has one. It still only has one hour of power. Oh, man. Okay, so I, I guess what I could do is I could just make sure it's connected every time, and then I turn on the engine every time I want to go out, so it it, uh, it recharges its own power. 
actually, it shouldn't be that bad because I do plan to make another ship that's going to be a power ship. And it's just going to run around with a lot of batteries. And anything that runs out of power, it will go and hook up to to connect to. So that should, um, that should make things better. All right, this video is already getting super long. And I'm probably going to edit down a lot of the building because that's what took a long time and the driving. But we are going to have to end it pretty soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build one more ship, which is going to be a flying version of this. It's going to have a lot less stuff. It'll probably have just a, a connector. and Well, it's going to be a very simple, small ship that's going to fly around scouting for the same purpose. Uh, and then we're going to build a little connection for this guy. We're going to allow it to connect. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add a backup camera because I just realized that I will need it um, very soon. Um, if I'm not here, it's going to be very difficult to connect this thing without one. So let's just add a backup camera right there. Let's go in here and name it. Um, control panel, camera six, camera backup. Sweet. All right, so we now have three cameras for this thing, and that's going to help with connecting. Uh, hopefully that won't interfere with, with how the connectors, like it won't bump, but we'll see. All right, let's build our next ship, which is going to be a, a uh, flying version of that. I'm going to do, it's going to be a very, very small ship. Oops. Hopefully using very little power to fly around. All right, the way this one's going to work is it's going to start with the connector. That's going to be the main feature of it because it's going to have to connect to the base for power. Then we're going to have, uh, what else do we want? Do we want hydrogen power or do we want just a battery? I think we might just want a battery for this one. Um, because hydrogen will be way too much uh, stuff. So one battery right there will be fine. We'll grab a... Um, I think we're going to use... Do, do atmospheric thrusters work here? I guess we'll try it. Why not? Okay, I think we have everything we need for this ship. It's basically just something that's going to fly around and uh, search for ores. Now, it also has the ability to grab onto stuff. So if something is stuck or flipped over, this thing should be able to get down there and, uh, and, and try and lock onto it and pull it up. Now, it doesn't have that much power associated with it, but I don't know. Maybe it'll be able to. Okay, so it's got a giant battery as well as a connector. Um, and that's how it's going to get its power. All right, let's do this. And it should be able to float there for quite a while while we uh, decide what to name it. So we're going to name this one after another Patron name. So let me go and grab one real quick and I'll be right back. All right, guys, for the second Patron ship of the day, I give you the Chris Craft, which is named after Army Chris, who's one of our Patrons and who, who has been on the channel for a long time. Um, from what I know about Army Chris, he likes camo and stuff. So I decided I'd kind of camouflage this into the, uh, the, the, the grass, I guess. So it should fly. And it should pick things up. Oh, wait. We need to set some settings real quick before we do anything. By the way, if you guys want to become a patron, the patron thing is in the description. That's the second time I've plugged that this video. So I hope you guys are not uh, too angry with that. <laughs> but it was fitting. Uh, landing gear number one and landing gear number two. We're going to make sure that these are not set to auto lock. There we go. Okay. We should be able to control the Chris Craft now. The Chris Craft control. Uh, and it's called the Chris Craft Scout Ship. Uh, for this one. Okay, so front upper is this one, and it's going to allow us to fly. We have two hours of flight with our battery, so let's fly around. Um, let's go to... Where are those positions that were marked? Let's put them back on the on the thing so we can go and test uh, our, our things. So Europa, we're going to go and see this. And we're going to see if, it's, uh, if, it, if it works. Alright, let's fly over here. Oh, by the way, atmospheric thrusters do work on, on Europa, so that's pretty neat as well. Okay, so let's hop down here. Now this thing's just a scout. In fact, you know what? I should really add some lights to this thing to indicate that it's a scout, because that would look kind of cool, wouldn't it? Okay, we do see the iron, the nickel, and the cobalt right here. That's pretty awesome. All right. So the benefit of this is that it can get very far very quickly versus the rover, but the benefit of the rover is that the rover has the ore detector on the bottom. And the ore detector only goes out 50 meters. So the lower you are to the ground, the more you'll see underground, which is why we saw the silver. All right. Hey, there's our person. We could ram into him and he'd spawn back on Mars. Poor guy. All right. And when we hop out of this, we should, we should be looking right back at him. Hey, what's up? That is creepy. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's remote access this guy back uh, a little bit. Get a different camera. Different camera will allow us to see more above, and then this back camera. Okay, let's um, 
Go land. Oh man, we're like right on the ground with this one. All right, we're gonna land it and we're gonna we're gonna make sure its uh, batteries are off and stuff. Or not not off, but you know. How's our battery power looking now? Nine hours of battery power. All right, that's pretty good. And when it's connected to the base, I doubt it will use that much either. Okay, sweet. We have two ships. Finally, the last part of this video we're going to do is we're going to connect them to the base. We're going to make a little base uh, connection. And I think these will just be right next to each other. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, hook them up. Now, these ones in particular, I think we'll just hook up right here. So as not to take up that much space. I think that'll be fine. So we'll do something like, oh, I want to grab the same block as I had before. So again, these are not going to be connected to the base. Actually, you do need to be connected to the base, don't you? Dang. Okay. Well, I was going to do it over here, but now I'm wondering if maybe I don't do it right there. I just leave this area open and instead do it over here. Which might be better. Let's remove this. Um, and we're, we're going to make ourselves a little uh, connection here. Alright, there we go. It's an interesting design, but this should back up properly into what we're trying to... Into, into the spot, I would imagine. Let's weld everything together and we'll test it out. Weld, 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 weld. Weld! Uh, we should have enough stuff for all of these. You're missing steel plates, okay. And you're missing interior plates, okay. Okay, those are now connected. They're not connected to the base quite yet, but they're connected to... Well, they're connected to the base, they're not connected to the cargo. But that's fine, we can at least test it. So, I think we'll put this one on the outer one and this one on the inner one. Um, and I think that'll be fine. I hope we have enough room. Because this does take up a lot of room. No, we should have enough room. Okay, let's uh, let's first grab the... That one. The, the, the Chris Craft remote access. Chris Craft control. Let's do our pre-flight. Uh, and I should have a sound thing right there. A, a sound block that makes like a cool turning on sound or something. Alright. And... Backup camera is what we want here. So I know that the camera is above it, so I will back in nicely. Oh my god, it's it's so close. Okay, G, uh, let's grab our this thing as well. We want to be able to connect. Switch lock. Alright, cool. And let's uh, un-preflight. Alright, awesome. That's now connected to the base. Hopefully the base doesn't decide to drain its power. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to hope that that doesn't happen. Okay, now you... Uh, we're going to go into the busy bee and check this one. Turn everything on. Alright, and then we'll back it up. Now this camera is also above it, I think. So we'll back it This is what the ramp is for as well, to get this in position. And I believe, yep, that did connect properly, which is a very weird connection, by the way. Dang. I don't know how much I like that. What's that looking like? <laughs> oh, man. Wait, why can I no longer remote access the uh, this one? That's worrying. If I go in here, I can't remote access it. I can only remote access... Wait, hang on. Maybe I have to remote access that. Then get press K and remote access... No, I can't... Oh, is it once it's connected, I can't remote access it? I guess technically it's part of the base, so what I'd have to do is remote access this, disconnect this, and then remote access this? That's really weird. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this, these blocks right here. And I'm going to add half blocks in. So I'm welding blocks now, uh, which I just realized that I was doing. I think it's probably fine now that we found iron over there, so I'm going to probably keep welding some blocks. Um, but now we should be able to move the busy bee into position. All right, busy bee, let's control you and bump up or bump on our backup camera. This might be per well. It's fine. Okay, number six is locked and ready to go. Okay, what do we need to do now? Let's uh, let's turn this stuff off. All right, good, good, good. It's still kind of weird, but it's not as weird. It's not like floating as much. So if these things like miraculously break or something, it'll be fine. 
Okay, so now what I need to do if I want to disconnect one is it seems like I'll need to connect to the base. I'll need to, so if, if I'm already connected to the base, I can see everything. I'll need to then find this if I want to get the Chris Craft uh, ready to go. And then I'll have to toggle it off, I guess? I guess I will, won't I? Okay, I toggle that off. Then I can remote, remote access the Chris, Chris Craft, turn everything on, and then we're good to go. Okay, that's weird, but okay, it's fine. Uh, this is actually a good good for you guys in the comments. Let me know if there's a better way to do what I was just doing um, for this. So it seems like if I want to access any of these, what I'm going to have to do is first connect to the base, disconnect the conveyor, and then connect back to this thing right here, which is then going to drive around and do whatever the heck it wants. Ooh, little eclipse. That's kind of cool. Um, but there must be a better way. Like, can I somehow... Like, for instance, if this ship is returning back, I'd have to basically disconnect from it, let it sit here, connect back to this, turn it back on, reconnect back to the ship, and back up. Is there a way I can instead, like, press a button, like right here or something, with the ship? Or is that not possible? That might not be possible. I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys think of this setup as a whole, and, uh, and let me know what... Um, what else I can do to it to make it work better? Because currently we have two crafts here, and we're going to have many more. We're probably going to have uh, four or five uh, crafts in total. So next episode, we're probably going to be building those crafts. The uh, the other ones, the miner, the welder, and the uh, power one. And we're also hopefully going to get this thing working, so we don't have to worry about dying here um, anymore. Uh, and then the welder pit, I think we'll probably have to wait until the episode after that. Um, but any any tips and suggestions you guys have for what I'm doing currently, please put those down in the comments. If you like the video, hit the like button. Put your put your other comments down below in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Space Engineers.